people assemble, uh, national religious leaders, as well as religious leaders across South Carolina who share in Barack Obama's vision of hope and change for our country. A great privilege today to be able to join so many other pastors and preachers from not just this area but around the country in support for Senator Barack Obama, whom all of us know to be a strong man of faith, nurtured and grounded in the faith of our fathers, and above all, who brings such a refreshing air of hope to not only the electoral process, but to the dreams and aspirations that so many of us have grown up with and been nurtured in. It is a delight for us, many of us who pastor large churches, small churches, medium-sized churches from across the country to stand beside this man who we believe can lead us to the next great place in our history. That's an honor, that's a blessed privilege to be able to stand with someone who you know is anchored in the same faith that has brought us thus far along the way. It's come over a way that tears have been watered, but we are convinced and we stand together, pastors from all over the country. I've never seen such a large assemblage of pastors, and you'll get many of their names, that want to support one candidate because we all believe that his faith is the same as ours that he has been called just as we have to lead and that God will empower him to do it in a major way. The thing that impresses me the most about Senator Barack Obama is his honesty, his candor, his freshness, um, particularly at, these time, at this time. We are in desperate need of a leader who cares about the needs of people. He said, let me stand up and speak to the powers that be. Let me speak to the auto industry. Let me speak to the energy. Let me speak to the oil industry. And that puts him out there all by himself. I think this particular election is extremely exciting. I'm, I'm so impressed with Senator Barack Obama. I have witnessed many elections to come and go. I've been on the issues for many years. But this one has a moral connotation to it. This nation for the last eight years or so have been told things about values that are not necessarily the most meaningful. And, uh, uh, and now we have the chance to elect a man who has been going to church Sunday after Sunday, right? Uh, whose life has been one that has associated itself with the church in fact. Uh, so many presidents never went to church before they ran for office, right? And they didn't go normally, they didn't go regularly. We're very tired of artificial religion in American life, yes, huh? Sir. We're very tired of values that aren't valueless, all right? And now we have the possibility of really bringing together the thought and the action, the depth of understanding both spiritual and political, that we can make this nation fulfill itself. Barack Obama is a man of deep faith. He's not a person who goes around testifying all the time and trying to get people emotionally entwined because of his understanding of faith, but he lives his faith. I'd rather see a person who demonstrates faith any day than hear a person talk about faith. People are crying out from their very, the depths of their soul, for America to seek a new direction. They're tired of the gridlock in Washington. They're tired of the uh, bitter partisanship that characterizes uh, what's happening in, in government and in the efforts to seek public office. And so I'm compelled, again, by that same faith that calls me to serve the common good to work uh, to help put in office people who can lead us in the new direction, people whose very spirit uh, is the essence of, 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 of coming together, of fellowship, of unity. And I believe the candidate that we're supporting uh, is the very essence and quintessence of that kind of leadership that brings people together and not divides them that looks to peace uh, instead of war, that looks to justice instead of injustice, that looks to, to us uh, turning to each other rather than on each other, transcending race or color or ethnicity, 
but coming together as members of the human family. When Barack left Harvard, where he edited the paper legal document with review, and corporate America fought each other to get him. He did something crazy. He went to the south side of Chicago and worked among poor people to help empower them to get out of the drudgery and the pits of poverty. He's crazy. And you know, I got to thinking, every personality, every force that's ever moved the world forward was a little crazy. <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth <laughs> defied the Roman Empire yes, and, and, and wore the crown oh, of thorns. A little crazy. Hello? And, and and just to bring it up to date briefly, I, 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 I was in Selma in March when we celebrated Bloody Sunday. Y'all know. Well, don't lie. If you don't know, raise your hand. I'll tell you. <laughs> we celebrate the 40th the anniversary of the Voting Rights March. And I was scheduled to preach at First Baptist Church. And Barack was speaking at Brown Chapel where I had spoken last week. And suddenly I got a headache. And I called First Baptist and said, I don't think I can make it. Don't feel too well. And I went over to Brown Chapel where Barack, because I hadn't heard him speak, and I wanted to hear him. And, I, you know, the word was out, something crazy was happening at Brown Chapel. People were talking about black men running for president. And I said, I'm going to Brown Chapel. And I went to Brown Chapel and spoke to you you were there. And when I got there, they put me up to say a few words and so forth. But I just got to thinking that maybe what we need in America and in the world today are a few more crazy people. <laughs> people who believe that we can achieve that well, which well, others well. consider unachievable. Right. The impossible dream that can become a reality here in our own time. And so I, I, I thought about it. You know, yeah. my son-in-law is a doctor. He examined me and he brought me a piece of paper. And he said, Pops, he said, your cholesterol is a little high. On the other hand, your good cholesterol is all right. Mm. And I got to thinking that's bad yeah. cholesterol yeah, yeah. and good cholesterol. And that's the same thing about crazy. There's bad crazy, and there's good crazy. All of us sitting out here in the cold this long, good crazy, but crazy. So I, 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 I think America today is ready to do that which some folk would call crazy, but it's a good crazy. It's a good crazy, and God takes care Oh, folks who are good crazy. I remember Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro locked with the king. And the king said, if you don't bow down, I'll put you in the fiery furnace. And he did seven times hotter. And Shadrach, Meshach, and the bad Negro said, you do whatever you have to do. But we serve a God who is able. Lord have mercy, who's able, who, who's able to take care of the fiery furnace. And they put him in the fiery furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar came back to look at their ashes. And he looked, he said, how many did we put in the furnace? And somebody said, three. He said, but I see one, two, three, four. And the fourth looked like the son of God. God takes care of folks who are good crazy. And we're here today as good crazy. We represent the good crazy folks all over the country. Harry Tubman was good crazy. Running up and down the Underground Railroad with a pistol on her hip, freeing folks. She said she could have freed a whole lot of old Negroes if they'd known they were slaves. But 
I just threw that in. I, I'm through. I just want to call on you today. Let's help America be good crazy. And let's help America usher in the kingdom of God in such a way that the lion can lie down with the lamb. Peace can come in Iraq and all over the Middle East. And there I shall study war no more. God bless you. Thank you for coming. In the name of Barack Obama, let's bow our heads. Join hand with somebody somewhere.